Congratulations to Team USA, winner of the Solheim Cup, 15 and a half to 12 and a half was the final tally when it was all said and done. Lilia Vu's birdie to secure that half point that Team USA needed at that moment. She was up against uh, Albain, Venezuela. She hit Lilia Vu, number two ranked player in the world. She hit a 300 yard drive, which is, I mean, I hope people were taking the time to watch the Solheim Cup. And you realize how good the golf swings are of these athletes. 300-yard drive, left her 103 in with a wedge, and she hit it to two feet. And Venezuela, correctly, didn't concede it. And Vu stepped up there, made the putt triumphant, and secured the win for Team USA. So they get back to Solheim Cup. It's the first time since the United States has had the Solheim Cup firmly in their grasp since 2015. Right? Did you you realize that? That it had been that long? Because remember, in 17 and 19, they lose. Last year, it was only a year ago because they're they're getting the Solheim Cup back on the, the years that they want them, even years. They they split 14 to 14 with captains Stacy Lewis and Suzanne Pedersen, respectively. So now it makes me wonder is Pedersen is Pedersen just gonna be done? Is she's like, no, I'm not doing this again. It was, you know, I can't take stress. Yeah, that's uh, they won in seventeen. Just correct my statement. Losing in nineteen, losing in twenty-one, having last time out. So the um, the question I was getting into there was Suzanne Patterson. Does she continue? She's she's oh one and one now. Stacy Lewis. Does she continue? She's one zero and one now. This one felt important. I think it was important. I think it was great that Team USA won. I think it's great for the event that Team USA won. The thing that was amazing, though, was how much it became kind of nail-biting down the stretch. Do you know what I'm saying? When you look at the, the Sunday singles, right, And then you had, right out of the gate, Nellie Corda and Charlie Hull. Right out of the gate. Talk about early entertainment. And Charlie Hull goes out and destroys Nellie Corda, who had a great Solheim Cup. Look at that on your screens. Those of you on the the radio side, I'll, I'll tell you what it says. Six and four, if you didn't already know. Six and four win for Charlie Hull over Nellie Corda. And you're thinking at that point, you know what? Nellie's had a great Solheim Cup. So she gives she she loses in singles to Charlie Hull. No big deal. That feeling was accentuated by the fact that. As much of a butt kicking as a six and four is in match play, Megan Kang, who seemed seemingly was the emotional spark plug of Team USA, she beats Emily Pedersen six and five. It's even more of a butt ki- kicking. And then after that, you're like, all right. Georgia Hall beats Allison Lee four and three. And it's like, do you see the pattern going on here? These aren't like really tight matches. These are just one side destroying the other. And again, there was there was still no sense of panic because at that point, with Hall's single victory, Europe had collected one point. One. They needed eight. And then after that, Allison Corpus dispatches on a Nordquist four and three. Again, that's a big margin. 
Rose Zhang destroys Carlotta Saganda, six and four. Six and four. So now, again, here's here I'm looking at it going, eh. Team USA is up one point. They haven't lost ground. They've now gained ground. In the very next match, Andrea Lee ends up tying the match. Still, that's a half point apiece. It's like, we have no problem here. Until Lexi Thompson's match goes down to the wire. She loses one up. And all of a sudden, Europe is starting to scratch together some points here. That's a full point. Next two are tied. Granted, that's a full point to USA. It's also a full point to Europe. Europe wins the next two matches after that. You get the the trend that's going on here? Were you guys watching all this? I know there's a lot going on with, with football and everything else. Jennifer Cupcho holds on 2-1 and one over Lynn Grant. That was, again, there was some great golf played. There's so much pressure. I've heard some people talk about the, the putting didn't look terribly impressive throughout most of the time other than, say, for what? You know, maybe maybe some select Ryder Cup players that I can think of. Poulter comes to mind. Uh, at times, Seve over the years, where you saw exceptional displays of putting. But it's not, in, in there's so much pressure, it's not a normal occasion. Go ahead, Andrew, you can keep rolling on these singles. So we get to... Lilia Vu, and Lilia Vu is playing against Albain Valenzuela. And as I opened up the show telling you, she smashes Vu a 300-yard drive and hits a, a wedge to two feet. And the win is secured. And you're going to hear Stacey Lewis talking about it in just a moment because we have, we have the, the sound from both captains. Uh, and and there, will be, there will be an accounting There'll be recounting and there will be an accounting that takes place. That's that's just the way it goes. And from Suzanne Pedersen's side, I think the big question they're gonna they have with her is is why did why didn't you play McGuire more? She's she's she had turned into Leona was a Solheim assassin. But she sat for three sessions. I mean, what was that about? What was the mentality? Uh, and that's why I go back to that question that I asked you initially. Do you think Suzanne Pedersen will come back? And then I have a question for all of you guys. Is, this a, is, it, is it a recency biased? If, or do you, I should better put it, look at the results of what just took place and go, you know, Team USA is poised to dominate now. Absolutely poised to dominate. That's where we're at. When you see how how razor thin it ended up being when it was all said and done. Or do you have this mentality of, no, 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 this was to get on the other side that we needed? Because usually in the reason I'm asking that question is usually in the wake of a team's win. And this was a this was in in the final tally fifteen and a half twelve and a half, even though it didn't feel like a like a big margin. It was it was uh, when USA got to fourteen and a half, they had secured the cup, but the matches finished the ones that are on the course because of record keeping, et cetera. Do you feel like no 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 this is this is new blood this is fresh blood this is for for the Solheim Cup team the same things happened to them that we need to happen. Uh, convincingly on the United States Ryder Cup team. Get new blood in there. Get new people in there. Get the younger players in there. You know, stop stop putting people on the team because of because of legacy. Build a team that's the best players right now. Well, does Team USA have that? Dom, what did you do with the uh, question of the day, just by any chance? Is there anything close to that or... 
Uh, no, it actually is unrelated to the Solheim Cup, but I'm happy to share it if you want to hear it. Yeah, I do want to hear it. The question of the day is phrased as follows. Does Rory McIlroy have a closing problem? <laughs> yes uh, or no? Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> now, what prompted you to yeah, do a question it, that wasn't Solheim Cup, but just out of curiosity? Um, I mean, the Solheim Cup's over. What am oh. I? I mean, I I don't see I don't see I mean I don't I don't want to talk about at least for me I'm not thinking in terms of well what does this mean for the next Solheim Cup I mean the President's Cup is like a week away Rory just blew the Irish Open Live Golf's individual season just ended I feel like there's a lot of things we could discuss we are and an event that's happening two years from today just so like because that would be the only question the only questions I would have about the Solheim Cup Matt would be future related questions who is the next superstar for the u.s team is it megan kang i think it might be who 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 should be the next captain for the u.s team and the european team i think these are interesting questions uh really yeah, those, interesting those questions, aren't the especially questions based I on have. what the, we saw the questions unfold. i have include what what was her what was her thinking with yola leona mcguire uh, what's the thinking of what went right, what went wrong? No, I, I'm not looking just two years down the road. I am curious about what I asked you guys about in terms of captaincy. Would you keep do it, keep doing it? And I think those decisions tend to be made pretty quickly in the wake of these things. Uh, but and I do. Do you have anything coming in from any of the people in terms of? Yeah, they were. They're questions? very much. Uh, the folks were very much impressed as well they should have been, with the level of golf that took place at the Solheim Cup. I mean, Rose Rose was their best player, uh, Rob says. Derek writes, I watched the four ball with Rose on Saturday. The level of golf was insane. And John says, Charlie Hall is like the female Ian Poulter. So what would that make Leona McGuire? Probably the female Seve, I feel like, at this point, maybe. Um, <clears throat> really enjoyed the weekend watching all the golf in the Solheim yeah. Cup. Bob writes, I mean, I think a lot more people watch the Solheim Cup than you would have imagined, especially Good, globally, Matt. Yeah. Because in the States, yes, American football was happening. And so I think that took some of the uh, excitement away if you were watching in the States, because I think some people might have switched over. But I think the rest of the world, especially in Europe, was tuned in. And to your point down the stretch there, it tightened up quite a bit because Leona McGuire beat Allie Ewing four and three before they finished up early because she crushed her. So they got that point and there was only, I believe there's only two matches left on the golf course when Lilia Vu secured her half point. Mm -hmm. So that's not a massive gap, Matt. That's still nope. very close. I know Jennifer Cupcho won her last match. And I believe Sarah Schmelzel, who lost one up, was the other match that was still on the golf course when Vu made that putt. So, you know, it literally came down to the end of the end because Leona secured her point in advance. So it was quite tight. At the time she secured her point, there was a lot of tension with the players, with you could tell on the broadcast on television, there was an incredible amount of tension coming down the stretch because it was absolutely not set in stone. There were still a lot of things that could happen. I mean, that match with Sarah, you can see it's just a one-up match. I, th I think it was tied at the time that Vu was putting. So anything could have happened. And it was it was intense. It was great. It was definitely It's just intense. what we want it to be.